Inhalation anesthetics work by producing loss of awareness and neuromuscular blockade. Uh, basically, this uh, is done while the vital physiological functions, uh, such as breathing and uh, heart beating, the uh, maintaining of uh, blood pressure, things of that sort, continue to function without any interruption. Uh, the inhalation anesthetics cause reduction in nerve transmission at synapses, and basically this causes the uh, sensations to be uh, blocked and basically uh, uh, do not, uh, uh, such signals do not uh, reach uh, the brain to cause uh, perception of pain. Uh, exactly how inhalation aesthetics inhibit sy sy synaptic uh, neurotransmission is not really uh, fully understood until now, but basically we have enough experiments and enough evidence that they work. Uh, there are several types of uh, inhalation anesthetics, and basically they started from the 1840s, and uh, uh, the, the first uh, inhalation anesthetic that was used was nitrous oxide, N2O, and uh, this was uh, called the laughing gas. And this has been used since then until now to uh, induce uh, uh, sedation or uh, loss of pain or uh, uh, reduction of pain in uh, surgeries and in uh, uh, dental offices and things of that sort. And basically, it's uh, it's a very uh, harmful gas and uh, basically can, can be used uh, without any uh, major uh, uh, side effects. Then ether was invented and basically then chloroform. Chloroform is also... Uh, uh, very useful, but unfortunately, it was found to be hepato, uh, uh, hepato, uh, 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 toxic, meaning that it, uh, it causes poisoning of the liver, and basically, uh, it's not uh, uh, used any longer. Uh, several generations of inhalation anesthetics have been uh, developed over the years, and basically, uh, uh, for ether, for example, the problem with ether is that it was flammable, and uh, several of these actually were flammable, and uh, touch of flammability can cause problems in, during the uh, operations. Uh, and basically, uh, it was desired to have uh, inhalation anesthetics that are inflammable. So basically, uh, if we look at all these uh, uh, types of uh, uh, inhalation anesthetics, we can differentiate between them uh, on the basis of the onset and duration of action, meaning that when they will uh, start to uh, basically uh, uh, induce the uh, loss of awareness and things of that sort, and for how long. And also, it's very important to understand the mechanism of clearance, meaning that how these anesthetics will be uh, cleared out of the human body after the operation, because we don't want to have uh, an inhalation anesthetics that will remain in the human body. And the safety, meaning that it's not toxic like uh, chloroform, for example, we said that it's hepatotoxic. So basically, we want to make sure that uh, the safety is there. So basically, these, uh, these types, these different types are compared in terms of the safety of their operation. And also, as we said, the flammability is a, a very important matter especially when we use uh, electrosurgical units right now where, where uh, uh, electrical arcs are, uh, are utilized to uh, cause uh, coagulation of it, things of that sort. And if you have a flammable anesthetics in the operating room, this can cause uh, a, 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 an explosion or something of that sort. So basically, flammability is a very important criteria to be taken into account when choosing inhalation anesthetics.